So in this video, we're going to be talking about limits and continuity. We're going to start working with um, calculus on vector valued functions. And what you're going to notice about this, we're going to get some like definitions for limits. We'll talk a little bit about them. But for the most part, finding limits is going to look a lot like finding limits when you have um, your standard functions in Cartesian, except for what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing um, finding the limit one uh, one variable at a time basically for a parameterized vector valued function. So we'll start out with this definition and the definition says that a vector valued function r it approaches the limit l as t approaches a and it's written as and this is the limit as t approaches a of the vector valued function r of t is going to equal l. And one thing to notice about r here and l is, is that r is a vector and l is a vector. They're bolded here in this typeface and um, that actually indicates to us that we're looking at vectors. So the limit, we take the limit of a vector and our result is also gonna be a vector. And then the thing below that, that's just your standard analytic um, definition of the limit. Basically that if you take the limit as t approaches a of r of t minus its limit, you're gonna get zero back. And that's exactly like what you saw when you did calculus one. Exactly the same, except for now what we're doing is we're actually putting in um, these vector valued functions and we're kind of working with a different kind of object. So the next thing you want to look at here is you want to notice um, this is another definition of the limit of a vector valued function. It's a theorem but it's basically utilizing and we're not going to get into the proof of how we got to, from the definition to here. Doesn't really matter for our purposes. Um, but basically what it's saying, if you look here, you've got r of t is equal to this vector valued function f of t i plus g of t j, and that's two dimensional. And so f of t is, uh, is x and g of t is our y values. And so this is saying that if you look, this limit, the limit of the vector valued function is simply the limit of each individual function evaluated at a. Okay, and we're going to see how that works. It actually is not all that hard to, hard to think about. And if we have three-dimensional vector, right, r of t, then it's going to be the limit of each individual function at a, okay, for each individual function in, um, in, the, in the vector uh, valued form, all right? So pretty much what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our vector valued function and for each component of that vector valued function, we'll be finding its limit at um, a value a. And that's really what we're gonna be doing. That's all we gotta do in order to find a limit. So now, let's say for example, we wanna evaluate the limit of this following vector valued function. And so we've got r of t is gonna be t squared minus three t plus four i plus four t plus three j. And we're taking the limit as t approaches three of r of t. And so we're gonna get back this limit vector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have, here's f of t, right? It's my x value, f of t is t squared minus three t plus four. And so the limit as t approaches three of t squared minus three t plus four, well, t squared minus three t plus four is continuous at three. So consequently, this is just gonna be three squared minus three times three plus four, okay? So it's nine minus nine plus four, so it's four. It's exactly the same as if you were actually working in your Calc 1 class for f of t. Then we'll take g of t, and g of t is going to be the other value. So that's going to equal 4t plus 3. And then we'll take the limit as t approaches 3 of 4t plus 3. So that's going to end up equaling 4 times 3 plus 3, which equals 15. So our l, our limit, is going to end up equaling 4 comma 15 or 4i plus 15j. And there we go. There's the, uh, there's the form for our limit. That's it. That's all we gotta do, okay? So you'll take the limit of each individual uh, function, all right? And that will then um, give you uh, um, each individual function that you, your vector value function's been parameterized into, and that will end up giving you your actual limit. Let's take a look at another example. So let's suppose that we have r of t is 2t minus 4 over t plus 4i plus t over t squared plus 1j plus 4t minus 3k. And so what we want to do now is I want to find the limit as t approaches 3. 
in this case. And so I'm gonna first look and I'm gonna notice a couple of things. One is that I've got a little bit of a domain issue. So for f of t, okay, for f of t, t cannot equal negative four, all right? Otherwise, uh, it, we have a function that ends up being undefined and that could potentially be a problem. If we look at j, t squared plus one is never gonna equal zero. So consequently, we don't have to deal with our domain issues there. And then 4t minus 3k, well, there's no restrictions on the domain for that either. So for r of t, our domain is basically t cannot equal negative 4. So we look at our, our um, limit, and great, that's not negative 4. So we're not going to have any issues with discontinuities. We're not going to have any issues with you know under, the function being undefined it there. So I'm just gonna go in and my limit as t approaches three of r of t, I'm gonna start out with the limit as t approaches three of f of t. And f of t is basically, is gonna be our x, x term. And that'll equal two times three minus four over three plus four. So that's two sevenths. Then I'll take the limit as t approaches three of g of t, that's our, our y value. And that'll be three over three squared plus one, which is three over 10. And then I'll take the limit as t approaches three of h of t, which is gonna be our z component. And that'll equal four times three minus three, which equals nine. So consequently, the limit or our limit here, L, is gonna end up equaling two sevenths, three tenths, and nine. And there is our limit. So now let's take a look at this definition here. Um, and this is the definition now for continuity. So we've got limits now, and now we want to move on and, and talk about continuity because that's the natural progression for our limits. And the idea here is, is that we're going to end up having, we want to know um, for what values of t is this function going to be continuous. And what that means for us is that we want to think about what values for t is each component in the vector valued function continuous, okay? So now you're looking, you've got like, say for example, either a, um, a plane curve or a space curve, like a three, uh, two dimensional vector or a three dimensional uh, vector valued function. And we have f of t as a function and g of t as a function, okay? So f of t has its own continuity and g of t has its own continuity. And um, when we look at the three dimensional, h of t will also have its own continuity. Now, the thing about this is, is that in order for the vector valued function to be continuous at a point, we have to have continuity, right? We have to have these three um, aspects, right? Um, the existence of the value at the point, the limit, right? Okay, and the limit equals the, the, the value at the point. So it's exactly like calc one. It's just that we have to have it for every single value in the vector valued function. Okay, so every single value in the vector valued function. So this is like your de definition when we were doing, um, when we were in Calc 1 and when you were looking at our original uh, definition of continuity. But now the added piece is, is that we're going to look at it for every one of our components, okay, and make a determination as to whether or not we have continuity for all of those components at that particular point. And if we don't, then the function is discontinuous. So let's take a look at an example. So let's figure out for what values of t is r of t discontinuous. So for what values do we end up having r of t discontinuous? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to determine discontinuity for each one of the functions. So if I look at 2e to the negative t, okay, its domain is all real numbers. It's actually um, all real numbers. And in addition to that, it's continuous everywhere. Right, it is, um, if you remember, it's an exponential function, so it's continuous everywhere. So we don't actually need, there's no points of discontinuity for that particular function, part of the function. Then we have, so that's for one. For two, now we look here and we're notice that if t, right, okay, so we've got an issue with our domain, we've got a discontinuity at t equals four over three, okay, and so it's discontinuous at that point, right? What we have there for t equals four, uh, four over three is actually we've got an asymptote. 
And then when we look third, right? And so we'll have, this is F of T, just to let you know, this is G of T. And then for H of T, our third function, natural log of T minus one, we're gonna have an issue when T minus one is um, less than or equal to zero, right? Okay, then the function is undefined. So the function ends up being undefined. Okay, so if t is less than or equal to one, we have an undefined function. And so consequently, now that we know those three, this is, these are, this is where we have discontinuity. Okay, because otherwise natural log is continuous. Uh, we have that asymptote at four thirds. Okay, and then we have a continuous everywhere function in e to the negative t. So when I look at r of t, okay, r of t is continuous or not continuous actually one and not continuous at t less than or equal to one and t equals four thirds okay we have our asymptote at four thirds for the jth term the j term and then we have the um natural log of t minus one is undefined when t is less than or equal to one, okay, because that's their natural log. And so that's where our discontinuity is as well. So notice these two pieces here, okay, form where our discontinuity is. And for the vector valued function, it's both. Now, by the way, had four thirds actually been less than or equal to one, then this function would have been only discontinuous at less than or equal to one because we wouldn't have, it would have been redundant to actually include the t equals anything less than one, okay? And so consequently, we can kind of put this together. It's actually only at the intersection of the two of them that we actually get discontinuity. So basically, what we're seeing here for um, both limits and discontinuity is just that limits, we basically, or we're gonna go find the limit for each one of, uh, each one of the functions at the particular point A. And then that resulting vector, that's gonna be the limit. When we think about discontinuity, what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to, or continuity, we're gonna to have to think about continuity or discontinuity um, for each one of those, uh, the, each one of the parameters, our X, Y, and Z, or our I term, J term, and K term, all right? And wherever we have the intersection of those, that's actually going to be um, the place of discontinuity or the place of continuity in that case, okay? So that's essentially how that works. So it's very, very similar to working in Calc 1. The definitions are very similar. We're just gonna have to deal with all the values in the vector, the vector valued function versus just a single function.